What is something you deeply regret doing as a child that still affects you to this day? Being so mean to my younger sister in our childhood. I often wonder how much I contributed to her current mental health struggles. It eats me alive some days. After every Thanksgiving dinner as a child my grandpa would put a plate of food together for a man named Mr. Bailey who lived by himself and didn't have family in town. He'd drive over to his house, drop the food off, talk for 510 minutes, and then come back. I didn't know this. One year after our meal my grandpa handed me a plate with a slice of pumpkin pie on it and told me to get in the backseat of his truck. I didn't ask questions and hopped in with the pie. We get to our destination and my grandpa opens my door and says, You have the pie? Quote, What do you mean grandpa? I ate it. I thought the pie was for me. I ate it in the backseat on the car ride like it was a brownie. Mr. Bailey didn't get any pumpkin pie that year. I still can't look at pumpkin pie without feeling bad about it. In middle school I jumped from the top of a slide and landed flat on the bottom. Hurting my back. Pretty sure I've never recovered. Falling into the trap of, if I don't ask for too much maybe I can get what I need. When I was 13 or 14, I saw one of my lifelong friends walking down the street. Blank stare with her makeup running. I was on my bicycle racing to get home before my 8 p.m. curfew. So I didn't stop to talk to her. She committed suicide that night. And I was the last person to see her alive. I went through intense therapy after that. As I was filled with guilt and grief, I still have issues with that guilt today. Some 21 years later, I was an only child to a single father who was diagnosed with brain tumors when I was 12. I watched him degrade and die over a six-month period. About four or five months after my father was diagnosed, he became so ill that he couldn't even remember my name. I remember how horrible I felt. A couple days later I stole my father's credit card and car and went on a spending spree. I remember buying a bunch of new DVDs a puppy, food, etc. and ignoring my life the whole time. When my father died a month or two later I found out that his bank account was drained and that the payments on the house didn't go through. So my stepmother lost me in our home and I spent five years in the system. I lived with the guilt and shame for 15 years until I made an effort one day to contact my step. Mother for old times sake. We never had a good relationship and it just got worse when my father died because of all the stress, loss, etc. I told her the story and she laughed. She told me that what I stole was so insignificant that they didn't even know for some time. My uncle, my father's brother, was the one who stole all the money. I only took a couple hundred dollars. Throughout the years I never knew and even my uncle let me live with the pain even though he knew because I confessed to him when I was a boy and upset, even though what I stole was so little. The regret and shame is so much bigger. I still live with it to this day. I took everything to heart. All the insults. All the failures. All the minor mishaps. I couldn't just let it pass me by. It hit me right in the heart. Which is why my current mental health leaves a lot to be desired. Giving my knees floor burn for fun. I don't have a clue why I thought it was fun. Now they are in an awful state and completely covered in scars. When I was five me and a friend found a frog down by the river. Being kids we had no common sense yet. We kept throwing it in the air and watched it bounce off the ground thinking it must be having fun. It died of course. At 60, I still can't look at a frog without feeling guilty. My senior year of high school there was a classmate that sat by himself at lunch every single dot day. I often thought about going to sit with him and never did. My heart still hurts from never doing it and that was 20 years ago.
I can't find him on social media or anything. I truly hope he is out there living his absolute best life. Not sleeping in my dying father's bed with him. He asked me to because he didn't want to be alone. I was 18 at the time and wasn't not prepared for all this. Until the day I die I will never forgive myself. When I was 12 my mom got drunk one night and told me to drink with her. She was pretty aggressive about it and I was too intimidated to say no since I had a habit of agreeing to almost anything. I started drinking and she'd regularly supply me with alcohol so she could have a drinking partner. I struggled with alcoholism for over 15 years. I've been sober for over 4 now. But all of my teen years and most of my 20s were absolutely lost wish I had been more brave and not taken that first drink. Burning my sister's dollhouse down. In her room. Decapitating her Mrs. Beasley doll. I realize how this may appear. But I swear I am not a serial killer. I regret not having thicker skin and sticking up for myself from my bullies. There were two individuals who were complete psychos and went out of their way to make several people's lives hell. One girl was so crazy she tried running my friend off the road driving home from school. She is now in prison for embezzling from her employer. In I believe second grade, a friend of mine and I were really mean to another kid with some type of mental challenge. It wasn't something we did more than this one instance. So I dk if I'd call it consistent bullying. But him and I said some nasty things to him on the last day of school. I should have known better and regret it to this day. I have seen his profile pop up on social media. And I do occasionally get the desire to reach in out and apologize. But I'm not sure it would be worth it so far in the future. Nonetheless, I really wish I could talk some sense into myself back then. The boy didn't deserve that. Nobody would have. One time when I was 67 I rode on a four-wheeler with my older sister. We hit a dip in my grandparents' pasture. My sister fell off and she went under the rear tire. She needed immediate surgery. My grandmother still blames me for it and it has affected me deeply. For years I listened to how my sister almost died due to my negligence. Stop exercising, any kind of working out because I was told my movement is awkward. Tried to shrink myself because I was a tall girl that stands out of other kids. Which ruined my posture. Now I have a very bad scoliosis that caused mild but chronic back pain. It's very visible as my waist is not symmetrical. Might have to go under a big surgery. Putting braces to my spine. In the next 34 years. Edit. Thank you. I didn't know scoliosis is purely caused by genetics. When I was four yo. The husband of my aunt died. Very soon after the his death. The whole family was gathered around in the living room. Me sitting across her. I wanted to make her feel better and said. Don't worry. You will find a new Maddie you will love. The hurt and surprised face of her hunts me even today. I understood I did something wrong but not really what at that moment. We are on good terms and she is living a good life now. She very likely forgot what I told her that day. I'm probably the only one remembering that conversation. Not applying myself more in my studying in high school. Spending time of sites like Live Leak and Rotten while in elementary school. Sitting at home all day during high school. Not studying while in school and struggling with building discipline today. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.